Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and I'm making a series of videos to help make your home more energy efficient and help you save money. In this particular one, I'm gonna show you how to insulate your loft using a mineral wool. Now, this is a typical attic area. You're gonna have your roof trusses like this, not that much headspace, and then when you look down, in most old houses, you're only gonna have 100 millimeters depth of roof joists. Now these have an underside of them, of course, which is plasterboard, which will be your upper floor ceilings that you see. So when you're working in a loft space, it's very important to be safe. What I would recommend is get some small scaffolding planks or large boards that you can lay down, spanning across the actual joist that can take your body weight to make it safer to work from. Because the last thing you want to do is put your foot through that plasterboard and you could end up in the room below. Now, if your attic area does have some old insulation in there, it might be a fiberglass material. What you want to do is try to remove all of that. So get yourself a good dust mask, gloves, cover yourself up. You can hoover that out, bag it up, and dispose of it at your local recycled centre. Now, the mineral wool that I'm going to be using is two different depths. I've got a 100 millimetre depth roll here, which that will be laid nice and tight in between the joists and standing up to 100 millimetres. And then the second roll I have is 200 millimetres deep. Now, this will be fitted crossing the joints across here, bridging over the timbers and the insulation below. I'm also going to be using a dust mask, of course, and cutting the insulation just with a large set of scissors. So there is a manufactured cut in there, though it's knitted together, just pulling it apart here. You know, you might be wise to do this before you actually lift it up into the attic area itself. Yeah, you can see, you can see the seam. But it's just coming apart. And what we want to do is just try and make it nice and snug up the side, all the way along there. Attics are generally not the most pleasant places to work in. They're dark, they're dangerous, as we mentioned earlier about the plasterboards below. So just make sure you well light the area before you start working and use plenty of boards to be able to work across the joists themselves. Make sure you take plenty of breaks, get some fresh air and plenty of water. So that's my main rolls done that are 600 millimetres wide. You see me start off with a full roll, I pull that apart, it's 1200 mil in length, it was now 600 and we fitted it in here nice and snug. A lot of the times in old houses you'll have an odd run which is a narrower piece, sometimes at one end, sometimes at both ends, which of course still has to be filled. And what the companies often do is make additional cuts in it there, it's so you can just pull that apart to get that smaller bit to fill in that void nice and snugly. Cutting the insulation is quite easy. I'm using a large pair of decorating scissors. If you do use a trimming knife, you may need to put a board flat down, press the insulation down, and then cut through it, and it'll come apart. So that's the first layer of 100 millimeter loft insulation, now complete, snugly fitted in between all of the joists. I'm now gonna turn my attention to the 200 millimeter depth rolls of insulation, and I'm gonna start right at the back and work my way across to the opening hatch. Remember, you don't want to corner yourselves and start at one position and keep rolling it out and work your way right the way back to the gable end and then you can't get down. Now, one thing you want to be aware of, depending on the age of your house, the structure of it might be a little bit different. You might have a solid brick wall or you might have a cavity wall, meaning one brick on the outside with a gap in between, hopefully filled with insulation, and then a block on the inside. If it's a solid brick wall or a cavity wall, where your eaves come down like this, and sometimes come down right the way down to here, is going to have a thing called a cross flow ventilation. It's little small gaps allowing cold air to come in and circulate around the attic space. Now, what you don't want to do is get your insulation, push it right tight into that corners where you can feel that draft coming in, and press it all in. I've seen it done many a times. You can cause damp, you can cause mold, you can cause the main timbers to start deteriorating because you do need to have that airflow circling around. If you do have the cavity walls, this is okay to continue all the way across 
and it can just tuck down in the gap and it can meet your insulation in between your walls because you've still got your airflow coming up this attic space because this is going to be a cold area remember this insulation is containing the heat in the house but these timbers still have to breathe they need that air so please don't block up any of the vents that are all the way along the eaves level of both sides of your roof Now the air's got at this, it's starting to swell and stand at the height it should be. So that's how quick and easy it is to safely insulate your loft. If you want to see more how-to videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to know more about the products I've been using, just visit the website, silverlinetools.com.